Hello, Ivan Ogasawara, and thanks for accepting my invitation for this interview for the Reproducible Research Scout YouTube channel. Let's start with a little introduction about yourself. Sure. Hi, Hanyari. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and thanks for the invitation. Uh, well, about myself, uh, I'm originally from Brazil, and currently I'm living in Bolivia. Uh, well, uh, I've been working with software development since 2002 uh, for different areas. Uh, for example, education, engineering, transportation, open source consulting, uh, public health, digital security, and public administration. Thank you. Uh, a lot of experience. How do you define the reproducible research and why do you think it is important in our current world? Uh, yeah, I think that's a very important question. Uh, I think uh, reproducible research is an essential part of open science. Um, basically, it means that the research should be well documented in a way that it contains all the information necessary uh, to be reproduced, uh, to uh, research to be reproduced with the data and the code accessible. And I think that's very important. Uh, one thing is uh, some, some research uh, are developed with public uh, money. So I think that makes sense to to have the, all the artifacts for that uh, research, uh, to have it uh, public, publicly. And also, I think there's, there are some researches that um, they, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, sometimes it's very hard to reproduce some research. Sometimes there is a lack of information, sometimes uh, there is no data, so you cannot uh, reproduce that research. And sometimes they just use uh, like a pseudo code, and it's very hard to reproduce that. You need to do all manually and sometimes not well, very well uh, documented. Also, sometimes it's hard to install the dependencies. So I think it's like um, uh, a very important topic. Yeah, the pseudocode is a really big challenge uh, in terms of reproducibility. Let's talk a little bit about Python. I know you use Python for the majority of your research. When was your first contact with Python and how was your learning journey? Uh, well, uh, not super sure, but I think I started to learn Python in 2012. And that, at that time, I started uh, with just Python and Django. Uh, but uh, in 2013, I started to work at a transportation laboratory. And there, I have contact with the scientific, scientific Python stack. So for example, libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Numba, and so on. So, so I can learn as well. So a, a lot of different uh, kind of libraries. Also, it was my first time working with, with data uh, acquisition. So it was a very nice uh, experience uh, getting data from devices. And yeah, I think it was around that time. And about my journey uh, after that, I've been working with Python uh, almost uh, daily. So yeah, that's uh, I, I I'm very happy with Python, and I really like to work with that. Back when you were learning NumPy and Pandas uh, on your first time, do you think that the, the documentation was really accessible, or do you think it, they did a lot of improvement? Yeah, it's a good question. I have a bad memory, but as far as I can remember, uh, I used to use a lot of the community channels like Google, 
groups, for example. I think uh, mainly group, uh, Google groups. And people there was very, were very helpful. Because I know your mother tongue is Portuguese. So I imagine that given the fact that all the documentations are in English, sometimes it can be quite challenging to start um, because of the language barrier. But looks like That's, groups yeah. is a really nice way to uh, overcome this barrier. So uh, yeah, there's an extra comment about that. The point is the groups also were in English, so <laughs> it was also a bit hard. But I'm pretty sure you could find some groups in Portuguese. Yeah, that's right. Uh, can you share with us a little bit about your Python developer setup these days? Uh, sure. Uh, currently, mainly I use uh, Conda and Poetry. Uh, what is Poetry? Poetry is um, a package manager. It's kind of similar to PIP probably to use people under the hood, but poultry, uh, it's, it's like a, a more high level way to, to update your dependencies files. So for example, instead of edit the dependency file manually, for example, requirements.txt, you just needed to run a command like poultry add and the name of the package. So it is very nice because you, for example, if you change the requirement file file manually, maybe you can add a new dependency that has conflicts, dependency conflict in, uh, among the other dependencies. But using a command, this command, it will try it first, check the dependency con uh, constraints. And if, if it's not compatible, it will raise an error. So it's very usable. Poetry is very new for me. And thank you for the explanation. So in terms of IDE, what are you using these days? One of the more common tools I use is Vim. Not sure if it's IDE, but it's very useful also when I'm, I needed to change or uh, create some code in other machines. So it's useful, but the, the main part of my work, I use for the main part of my work, I use uh, VS Code or VS Codium as well. Good, very nice. Uh, what is the biggest advice that you have for someone that's starting to use Python in their research, make their research reproducible? So uh, Conda is a, a very uh, nice package manager. Uh, the, for example, the difference between Conda and PIP or Poetry is that using Conda, you basically is just downloading a pre-compiled package. So you don't need to have the tools uh, necessary uh, for com the compilation. You just need you just need to download and uh, install. In this case, it's basically uh, saving the, the files into specific directories. And you don't need also, you don't need uh, root or admin uh, privileges to install that. It will, it will install in the user environment. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, in the past, before Conda, also I saw some, some tweet about before BC, before Conda. It was a different era. era. So uh, before Conda, it was uh, very common problems about installation because uh, someone created a package that was uh, working perfectly in a specific machine, but other people that tried to install that in their machines, it was not working. So it was like very frustrating, frustrating that time. So yeah, now with Conda, it's, for example, packages like GTAL, uh, that is very problematic. Uh, currently, using Conda, it's very, very simple. 
Yeah, uh, need to clarify to our audience that a uh, big majority of some of the Python packages are fully write on Python, so they don't need to be compiled. So uh, in the essence, they would work with just with pip. But for most of the scientific stack, like NumPy and SciPy and Pandas, big part of the code is written on C or C++ plus or Fortran. And then yep. those files need to be compiled. So uh, that's one of the main reasons for Conda to get all this package that has C, C++ of Fortran dependence and compile them uh, and just provide a binary for the user, which will be faster and will avoid the dependence of having a C compiler or whatever other compiler they have. Do you want to say about something about number. Recently, I heard that it is faster and provides more uh, information to the user. About Mamba, uh, Mamba he was created because, mainly because uh, Conda uh, start, get it started to be very popular. And uh, for example, Conda Forge, is one of the most uh, popular Conda channel available. And there are a lot of packages there. So in the, uh, with this scenario, uh, the, the, the code, the library that is used to resolve all these uh, dependency trees uh was taking too much time so for example to sometimes to install a package it was taking around maybe 10 minutes and it's not like uh acceptable so it's not uh, something that uh, any user wants to to wait in order to install one package so another company called i think one stack they started to work on a uh, a new project called Mamba, and Mamba is a C++ drop in place, uh, drop in place uh, package manager that works on top of Conda. So basically, <coughs> it will sorry, it will work together with Conda, but with a better uh, resolver and much faster. Cool. But uh, yeah. And the point now is that, uh, the good point, I mean, uh, is that Conda is now, uh, uh, has an option to use Mamba, in this case, Mambalib, that will be like the core for the, the resolver. Very nice. Thank you for all your explanation. So our time is running out. Any project that you want to share with us? Currently, uh, I'm a volunteer in a project called Open Science Labs. Uh, it's a community that aims to help students, teachers, and scientists from Latin America region uh, with topics about open science and open computing tools and programming languages. Sounds a very interesting project. I will include a link on the description of the video. So thank you, Ivan, for your time. And this was a very joyful and delightful conversation. I hope that you have a joyful night and big success on your projects. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.